is Kuldeep and uh, today we are going to discuss about the uh, announcements that have been introduced in the latest version of Creo 7.0. Uh, before moving ahead and uh, diving deep into the core announcements, uh, a brief introduction about Deltron. Uh, Deltron is a company uh, that's based at Charge Airport Friesan. We are backed by a team of competent engineers who hold uh, multi-year experience uh, in their respective domains and are experts in their field. Uh, a short note about myself, uh, my name is Kobe and uh, I look after the sales at Deltron. I hold an uh, uh, engineer's degree in mechanical and I'm holding an MBA in marketing. Uh, now, uh, let's try to first discuss uh, why Creo, why would customers like to subscribe to Creo or use Creo as compared to other offering from, from the market. What makes uh, EPC offering unique against any competition and uh, why customers uh, always uh, bring up on us for the solution or technological needs whenever they are in the offer. So uh, Creo is a pretty catch solution that helps customers to build that product faster by accelerating product innovation, raising the cost here at the time, and replacing adoption with us. Going from the earliest conceptual phases of product design to manufacturing to fully deploy smart connected products in the field with Creo, customers can take numerous advantages while taking advantage of the solutions being offered by BTC Creo. In fast-changing, highly competitive world of the industrial IoT, I believe there is no other company that can get customers substantial value as quickly and as effectively as PTC Creo. Emerging technologies are disrupting many aspects of design and manufacturing, thereby driving the renaissance of design across engineering manufacturers. PTC is taking this technology value and deeply integrating them in the design environment so that users and design engineers working in everyday care too can use them as part of their existing workflows. I believe, especially with the previous and the revision of the of design configuration. In the next slide, I will introduce some core announcements that have been introduced in the process, especially related to the productivity, the generative design, the simulation, the body design, and the additive and subtractive manufacturing. Uh, for an easily attended game, these four announcements would mean that a great innovation in generative design, real time simulation, additive manufacturing, multi body design, and all of the executive to succeed in new products. For a mechanical engineering manager who is working for a team, he will empower a team with new capabilities in the area of technical design, real time simulation, additive manufacturing, multi body design, and numerous other work enhancements. I do with these enhancements, the team as mechanical engineers will be more productive, innovative, and create higher quality products faster than ever. For an end user, Creo demos a net generation of design and innovation with new capabilities. These improvements would allow them to ideally build higher quality products faster than before. Additionally, the whole working enhancements make Creo more effective and easier to use than before. As with our Creo standpoint, it features significant core modeling improvements which allow Creo to design better products faster. I would like to discuss some of the more impactful ones in the product sector. New capabilities in Creo 7.0 include enhanced graph, improvements to coding error, and multiple UI improvements to sketch a tool. Additionally, there have been multiple improvements to do with ones, updated energy standards, and branding improvements. These capabilities are easy to use, intuitive, and available to all the end. A brief demo point of some of the functionalities available inside the schedule. There are two major enhancements with the ability of constraints and mirror. With MVD, it makes and supports the latest ASCII and ISO standards. And as draft is highly automated in the new version, which makes it easy for new those to recognize that from the code record. This process for a highly manual process and users. Random introduction three major enhancements. Including the instructor control, manual measurement, and a power option. The next major enhancement in the field is for generative design. 
helping customers to deliver the best designs in this possible. Before delving deep into the specific addition or movement of the capability of generative design, let us first try to understand what generative design is. Because this technology is not a very old technology. This technology has matured in recent years itself. And I believe crypto is almost in adopting technology. Generative design can help unleash digital transformation and for the enterprise. With generative design, manufacturers can drive workforce productivity by effectively addressing the skills. An entry level mechanical engineer, for example, can create a path through generative design without extensive knowledge of manufacturing processes that a senior engineer would have from years in the field of the design. Generative design also allows engineers to explore traditional and advanced manufacturing techniques for the differentiated products, bringing value to not just productivity but to competitive differentiation. What's more, uh, it improves the supply chain processes. Let's try to imagine a scenario wherein there are around 25 parts to manufacture, and with the help of generative design technology, customers can probably uh, you know, reduce these parts. To one or two. This itself will have a lot of impact on the processes. With generative engineers, engineers can take advantage of the advanced manufacturing techniques and embrace additive manufacturing. With the introduction of CREO 7.0, we have introduced a new protocol of optimization extension inside CREO 7.0. CREO generative protocol optimization automates the design of innovative products based on functional objectives, uh, constraints, loads, and manufacturing processes. The result is a design which is optimized for efficiency and manufacturability in a way that's human designer could have never easily produced using the transfer or using the production of the Some of the core, uh, I would say, advantages in the topology extraction would be ease of use, fast optimization, better, powerful optimization technology, Result verification and integration, semi automatic character construction, interactive and parameter behavior. Uh, the last uh, option of interactive and parameter behavior is where uh, CREO is unique compared to other competition, whereas uh, I do. Because uh, with this functionality, users can again go back to the parametric model, do any design change, and the topology extension automatically modifies the generated design without them having to recreate all of the processes. As far as I understand, there is no software that offers this whole functionality. This is uh, a case study uh, from a company called Jacobs Engineering. And Jacobs Engineering is involved in designing the next generation space room for NASA. Uh, they are users at uh, Jacobs Engineering. They say that uh, Jacobs expects that we can generate a design which will in the design time by after 20 years. And produce parts which are incredibly lightweight, resulting in significant fuel savings. The next major enhancement introduced inside the CRIO is called real time simulation. Now, uh, CRIO real time simulation is powered by analysts who are leaders in the simulation industry. Imagine a case scenario where a user always likes to create a best product in time. But the traditional methods uh, you know, of creating products and then handing uh, them to manufacturing is that we will often have to iterate the design uh, with minimal feedback from the simulation. There is no direct connection between the design and the simulation. So, typically, what happens is that once they design a product, they get these products back to the simulation, and the simulation team does some modifications inside the constraint and again advises. To do changes so that it can make This is an iterative process which goes back and forth and it results in a lot of productivity issues because there is no direct way to understand what would be the implication if there is a design improvement. Imagine if you have a tool that can provide real time feedback on the design decisions that users make. Imagine how fast 
and more effective it would be to iterate to make the design more to bring red products to market faster cryo simulation makes this available now significant change that happened in the cryo simulation lies of flow analysis in cryo sand one zero fluid flow analysis inside cryo with a new cryo simulation method the software is used instantaneous flow simulation capabilities and directly integrated with an cryo environment specifically for engineers software e of use is the they do not need to worry about having a CFP expert knowledge to run the simulation. As users are kind of maintained to the technology, analysis get automatically and dynamically added. Clear simulation is light, is fast, intuitive, and powerful. Uh, in addition to the CEO, some point here also has significant improvements to the CEO simulation line. Work for Android products, uh, including has the improvement of product and by increased product to the customers. Improvements to the edge and make result easier to improve. Additionally, uh, we can also now conduct a transient and thermal study of the software. These pop capabilities are more refined into the real performance of the product. Uh, an example of a company using you know, the real simulation product that promised uh, Randy J. Uh, at uh, that promise mentioned that it's unbelievable to support the real simulation product for their products. Uh, what this company does is in case you go to any stadium, you find these all big frames that are hanging here. And uh, these frames hold the big LED and LCD panels. So, uh, that comes design is why these frames are designed. It's very much important that the frames are designed to the optimal factor of safety. And also, weight is taken into consideration so that the frame or the structure should hold all the recorded parameters and the spaces. With the introduction of the Kudo simulation, uh, Acromonis uh, can directly get the results without the time to iterate between the lines and the analysis of The next major, I would say one of the major advantages of the is the multi body. Now, uh, multi body design was the request that was pending a lot of the customers because there, there were some advantages which you would have. Now, with the introduction of multi-body design, the users can implement advantages in all areas, including generative, as long as efficient and processor. Now, what exactly uh, is multi-body design? With a multi-body design, the software allows you to separately manage, visualize, and design the product volume. The next, uh, the new workflow leads to a more efficient and flexible part design and a better user. Multiple design is particularly useful for generative design, design for additive management, and similar chapter designs. Some of the advantages of multi-body design are that it improves making for software and easier design of workflows, increased visualization and usability while customers have multiple options and available. Flexibility is a more efficient and flexible part. Uh, for an additive or a generative design, multi body uh, is uh, immensely useful because, for example, if users uh, want to design uh, a generative design, you know, with an additional multi body design, users uh, can separately eliminate starting geometry and exclude geometry from the study when they don't want the study to be considered. Users can manage the resulting in different types, such as generative or B run. With all this flexibility, they can have this innovation that's possible. In terms of the additive manufacturing, multibody again helps users to change the print color and material for specific geometry, giving them greater flexibility design on the optimal foot. In terms of simulation, multiple body again helps users to perform best under the real conditions. Multibody design ideally allows to use multibody for simulation processes. This is particularly useful for analyzing fluid cavities. Uh, using CFP dynamics. Uh, in addition to multi body design, just not for, I would say, specialized cases, it's helpful in every day to day when uh, a CRIO user or a uh, CRIO user uses the software. CRIO 7 gives uh, greater flexibility and control of geometry, making it more productive than ever before using a multi body design. Uh, 
Uh, one other major enhancement introduced inside the CREO is for the additive and subtractive manufacturing. Uh, I will do a little bit on the additive manufacturing. And uh, additive manufacturing has been in the past, I believe, around 20 years or so. Users have been actually building parts, but uh, recent one of the parts that are printed were used for uh, performance and also for performance. Uh, Obviously, there are for the past couple of years, the uh, parts are being printed for uh, production. This is something uh, that has now come in the market because uh, there are significant and numerous advantages of using 3D printing uh, for production purposes. Now, a problem with additive manufacturing, especially concerning the production of parts, is that there are many softwares that users usually use while getting a part. Uh, the soft users need to use the software for design, and they need to optimize it, then they need to validate it and crunch it. Now, all these parts or all these processes that are involved in the software involve different application or usage of the software. Because the users want to the final production parts and release these parts to the manufacture, they need to recreate the models in CAD. Now, imagine what's going to happen if there is a design change. So, whenever there is a design change, then the users need to go back to the basics. And it's a huge iterative process that releases the results in loss of production. So the CEO, I can do manufacturing and design extension. Users can design, optimize, validate, and run a print check in a single environment, thereby reducing overall process time and mistakes. Users can make use of out of box capabilities, including print check, creation of print trays. Uh, users can directly connect to services and 3D plastic printers, and also materialize print zero. Users can design for additive manufacturing in polymers and in metal and then connect direction to the chosen printer with its optimized printer profile and support structures. With CREO, users can create a variety of parametrically and partially controlled data structures. Because of the tight integration between CREO parametric and CREO simulate, we are able to optimize and optimize these practices. And since uniform lab structures are not always able to achieve the optimal solution customers desire, CREO provides users with the ability to vary the size of lattice beams and localizations, allowing customers to design for exact and general responses as you need. We also have some features in the process of manufacturing application. Users can now add relatives and play from the development area. The software identifies and follows hard edges, meaning that the lattice is a faster and cleaner. Additionally, customers sell imprints give users flexibility while creating the lattice. So, so that is, uh, the lattices based on the alone level are now introduced inside the CRIO. So that is lattices identify and follow hard These lattices are especially useful for medical manufacturing devices and products which require heat transfer Finally, added manufacturing now introduced and fully added plug in from a product called Amazon. This is a third party product sold by Active Works that has been introduced by Active One of the major additions or I would say improvements uh, by the introduction of this product is that uh, imagine a situation where customers need to 3D print their parts and at the end of the printing they feel that there is a deflection in the part. So most of the software as of now do not calculate the deflection introduced after the printing is done inside the part. So with the introduction of this uh, product, the software is able to calculate the deflection of any given part based on the design and based on the placement of support structures. Once the deflection is identified in the software, it includes or introduces a shift in the CAD design so that when the component is printed across, the deflection is calculated. In addition to additive manufacturing, there have been improvements in the subtractive manufacturing where CREO now supports Swiss turn machines. In addition to the addition of Swiss turn machines, software is more intuitive and more user friendly for very complex machines which have multiple turrets and multiple design station structures. Uh, there have been some notable advantages and uh, improvements into the uh, PLM part as well as uh, IoT 
and uh, government reality part. So, uh, having said that, uh, I will pass it on to my colleague Rafesh. Rafesh is an application expert with Enron. And uh, Rafesh will dwell more upon uh, the improvement I have been discussing. And I believe he's also going to mention about uh, the whole usage license. Considering the current situation, how users can get benefited with the, the whole usage license that's offered inside the CRIO and what's the procedure and uh, to get that license installed on a user who is working from the home. So I pass it on to uh, my colleague Rafesh. And at the end of the demonstration, if you have got any queries with regards to product, uh, please free, feel to contact me. Thank you. Thanks, Kuldeep. Hope everybody is able to see my screen. So as Kuldeep discussed, uh, the objective of my presentation will be to showcase the technical capabilities or the new en enhancement in CRIO 7. One of the major enhancements that CRIO has come up with is the multi body approach to product design. So, as part of this multi-body capability, we will see how we can create complex grooves in a plastic handle using pattern geometry of a body. So first of all, in the interface, you can see that in the model tab, there is a body group which has been added that allows you to deal with multiple bodies within any part geometry. So as part of this exercise, I want to create a basic tool body. Then I will pattern it using a simple pattern option. And then I'll be able to subtract that geometry from the front. So we'll go for the front plane. I'll click extrude. I'll switch to the normal orientation. And I want to take this opportunity to also showcase some sketching enhancements. So I'll go for a simple rectangle. And you can see that the system is quite interactive in snapping and also giving you the feedback about the relationship that it is capturing. So I'm coinciding one of the reference lines to start this rectangle. And if I snap it, so it is intelligently snapping to any existing geometry as well. We can control this snapping interface. Hope everyone is able to see my screen. Okay, so let me start from scratch. So basically, I want to create complex grooves in this plastic handle using multi-body techniques. All right. So you can see in the interface that you have now the a, a group called body, uh, which contains commands for operations on multiple bodies if they are available in a part geometry. Also, you can see on the left-hand side from the model tree, there is a category called bodies. And currently, there is only one body in this component as of now. So now I will create 
the tool body that will be used to manipulate this geometry. I'll go for the front plane, I'll create extrude, click to orient the view parallel to the screen. I will then go for a simple rectangle. All right. And I will dimension as per the design intent. So I'll go for this being 1.5, this being 0.5, and I'll create one more dimension between this object and this one. This is going to be 0.5. Okay, I will set the depth as a symmetric depth. Give it 45 value. And currently, it is merging with the original feature, which was a default option. But now, as part of the multi-body approach, there is an additional tab which is available for base features like extrude. So if we go to the body options tab, we can now have the option of creating it as a new body. So I'll go for a new body. I'll hit OK. Now we can perform some specific operations on this newly activated body. So you can see in the model tree that body two is now the active body in this part. All right, so I can go for some local operations on this body. I'll select this edge. I'll click chamfer. I'll just make it 0.3. I'll also select control and select the other edge. Right now, I will create a group of these two features so that I can pattern it. So I'll go for group from the mini toolbar and then I can utilize the pattern option, a simple dimension pattern. So I'll select this one and I will say 2.5 and 27 as a number of copies. So now you have a pattern. I'll create one more feature so that it will remove the unwanted portion of the bodies that will be required for the eventual Boolean operation. I'll go for the top face of body one, go for extrude. I can utilize offset project edge option with the loop option, select the surface once again. So the offset is in the wrong direction. I'll enter minus with the number so that it is offset in the right direction. And then I'll hit close, hit okay. I want to go for remove material. So I'll go for flip and also activate remove material option. And I can go for a certain depth, right? And I can also go for flipping. So now, it ensures that whatever material is retained is the one that I want to eventually cut from the yellow body. I'll hit OK. So now there are two bodies and you can see now that there are certain operations which are automatically associated with those bodies. As the features get created here, those features get associated automatically with the respective bodies. So now I can set the geometry filter to bodies. I can go for selecting the body or I can go for the merge option, Boolean operations option, select subtract option, select the yellow body to be modified and the modifying body to be the pattern of the tool bodies. And you get the final result that you were looking for. So such kind of complex operations earlier were also possible with Creo, but you had to use a lot of surface modeling techniques. 
to get this geometry. So now with multi-body approach, it offers a more flexible, more efficient workflow to get this geometry. All right. I will, I will also want to show some enhancements in sheet metal. So if I go to sheet metal, So now there is a quick announcement in the form of uh, how forms are treated in the flattened state. So I will create a simple planar sheet metal geometry. I will give it a specific thickness. And now I will go for a form option in the form of a sketched form. I'll select the top face. I'll sketch something like a circle. I'll select OK. I will extrude the depth. I'll go for some fillets on the placement edges. I'll also add some taper. Now you can see that there is some deformation here. So if you go to the flat state, if I preview the flat state, So you can see that there is some de unwanted deformation here, which can prove very difficult in the manufacturing stage. All right. So now we can get rid of this deformation by simply redefining the form. And under options now, we have an extra option of trimming the edges. So as soon as you go for trim edges, you can see that the deformation is gone. And if you now preview the flattened state, you get a nice clean edge that is suitable for manufacturing. Okay, so a nice announcement there. For the draft, The announcement in draft is supposed to be on imported geometry, but it also acts on existing Creo geometry. So I'll create a simple block. And I will go for draft. So now you see that these surfaces are already drafted, right? So if I now go for draft, and if I select the same surface once again, right? So it, you have the ability to redraft once again, the same set of surfaces, which was not possible earlier. Plus you can, change the draft angle as well. So this is again another good announcement, which works very well on imported geometry as well as on native Creo geometry. So there are uh, multiple enhancements uh, and for the sake of time, we cannot cover each and every announcement, uh, but uh, there are similar uh, advantages of multi-body across the entire product development process. 
be it live simulation, be it fluid flow simulation, be it generative design, or be it topology optimization, as well as in additive manufacturing, which Kuldeep has already stressed upon. I would like to draw attention to uh, certain uh, other benefits available under Creo licensing if you are under subscription. Namely, those are uh, home use licenses and license borrowing. So basically, Creo home use licenses are available to every user who is under active subscription. So um, with every uh, license, uh, say if you go for a standalone license, you get one home use license. But if you go for a floating license or a concurrent license, you get two home use licenses. OK, so home use licenses show up in a customer's install base and are obtained the exact same way as the commercial license, either through the web tools or via license management. OK, so uh, there is a certain procedure that uh, a customer would go through to obtain these licenses. So first of all, uh, uh, there is uh, something called as a designated admin within your company that gets access to license managing management privileges on the customer account portal of ptc.com. The admin will create a list of users, CPU IDs that want a home use license. And they will utilize the web tools to obtain locked license files. OK, so um, one thing that I want to add here is that even though you go for if your main license is for Creo Design Advanced, that will give you the capability to uh, access advanced assembly extension licenses, the home use license will always be based on the base package, which is Creo Design Essentials. So irrespective of whether you have a Creo Design Advanced or a Creo Design Advanced Plus or a Creo Design Premium, which will give you access to a host of other extensions, the home use license will always be a base, base package and it is a locked license, right? So each user, uh, the admin can create a thumb drive with a folder containing the license codes and the Creo installation software. And then the user can take the thumb drive home, install the software, and drag the specific license into the licensing page of the installation and let Creo install it from there. Uh, Creo packages also include e-learning. Right? So both precision learning management system and a new training central license manage, uh, learning management system operate on an open licensing scheme based on the organization name assigned to the company. Any user who establishes a PTC service account gets associated with an organization or a company. If they are in the organization, they can access the e-learning. This license quantity establishes a monthly limit of unique user access that the customer is supposed we receive, we reserve the right to audit page to ensure the customer stays below the license quantity. The system does not lock out access if the license quantity is exceeded in any given month. Uh, uh, Creo also allows license borrowing. So basically with license borrowing, you can run Creo applications on all clients without being connected to the license server. Uh, one of the requirements for borrowable license is that you need to configure your license server with a borrow license file. The license file must have a keyword called borrow. And you can uh, then uh, go for borrowing licenses. So one of the key things in um, borrow license is that you can uh, extend this uh, borrow duration. Uh, the default uh, borrow uh, duration is 15 days, okay? But it can be extended to a period of 180 days. For this, you need to set up an environment variable called lm underscore borrow underscore duration, and that must be set on the client machine as a system environment variable. 
and that can be set to a value of 179. All right. So uh, let me show you uh, from where you can initiate the borrow application. So if you go to your uh, Creo load point, that is where the application is installed. You can go to common files. Yeah, so you have to go to the parametric folder within the Creo installation folder, bin folder, and there is a batch file called PTC borrow. You have to initiate this application while the license is connected to the license server. I'll close my existing Creo sessions. So this is the interface of the borrow. So you have to select the configuration which you want to borrow then you have to set up the borrow duration so i believe you can set it maximum to five all right but as i said this can be extended to 179 with the help of an environment variable and you have to click on start so as you click on the start the creo session will be started and then you can disconnect or you can exit the Creo session. And then you can disconnect from the license server and again, start the borrow license. All right. So this is in general, the procedure for borrowing. You can also, uh, in case if you want to return the borrow license early, then even that can be done using a certain environment variable called pro allow early return so this is something that i wanted to show as part of uh, uh, the presentation so for uh, you know users who want to prefer or who have been asked to work from home these are the options that ptc provides in the form of home use licenses and in the form of license borrow and I can show the borrow license, uh, the, the license file, which has a keyword called borrow. So whenever PTC issues license files, you get two license files. One is a standard uh, with a keyword called standard and one is a keyword without the standard. So the borrowable license file is the one which is without the standard keyword. So if you open this file, as an example, and if you go for searching for the word borrow, we'll find that this license file has the keyword borrow. So you need to use this license file for configuring the FlexNet license manager. And then you can initiate the borrowing procedure using the PTC borrow dot. Uh, this was all from my side. Any technical queries, you can uh, feel free to contact me or Kuldi. Thank you.